Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Ukraine is our enemy. At any point, did anyone other than I have full editorial control over the show, and the contents of the show are often apolitical? Examples include discussing spirituality, dating, and video games. In uh, 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 triggering this conflict, Ukraine is the greatest threat to this nation and to the world. Um, here's the indictment, two counts, Farah and money laundering. The U.S. company at the center of this Russian plot uses the same slogan, the indictment known, as Tenet Media, the home of Lauren Southern, Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, amongst others. And so that's interesting. Initially, they did a deal. Benny Johnson would, unknowingly, work for the Russians for $400,000 a month in exchange for four monthly videos, plus a $100,000 signing bonus. Pool also agreed to $100,000 a video, but no bonus. Weak negotiating skills. <laughs> Real estate news. Benny Johnson just bought a South Tampa bungalow for 1.45 mil. <laughs> Plagiarism pays well, apparently. Man, I'm in the wrong line of work. Indictment alleges that RT employees covertly funded and directed a U.S. company with $10 million in order to push pro-Russia content. The company was based in Tennessee. There's one media company based in Tennessee with the same phrase as in the indictment. Network of heterodox commentators that focus on Western political and cultural issues. And identified six commentators, including Commentator 1 and Commentator 2, as the talent. U.S. Company 1 regularly posts videos featuring these commentators, as well as other videos that do not feature the commentators. Uh, Tenet Media is a network of heterodox commentators that focus on Western political and cultural issues. Seems a little bit like it's repped from there. Meet the talent, Lauren Southern, Tim Poole, Taylor Hansen, Matt Christensen, Dave Rubin, Benny Johnson. Dave Rubin? Company information, Roaming uh, USA Core, Tenant Media, Tennessee Domestic for Profit Corporation, active. Yeah, I don't know if there's a smoking gun, but, and there's a Canadian entity that owns Tenant Media. Founder One's Canadian company, Canadian company number one, NRT's parent organization, Anno TV Novosti. This content is generally considered English language social commentary. RT directly published some of Founder One's paid work, while Founder One posted on other Founder One's paid work on Founder One's personal accounts without attribution to RT. One is a United States corporation established under the laws of Tennessee. Founder One described the US company and the subsidiary, so that's where we go back to that. So that could be Lawrence Southern for the Canadian entity. The indictment specifies that two of the people who work for this Tennessee company, Tenet, were deceived, meaning they didn't know the Russian government was running an influence op. Dave Rubin has 2.4 million subscribers and Tim Pool has 1.37. They mentioned that one of them respectively have 2.4 million and one has 1.3. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not a smoking gun, but that's a lot of evidence that's piling up so far. <laughs> Benny Johnson almost has 2.4, but they apparently rounded down from 137 to 13 for Tim Pool, so they figured Dave Rubin's 244. 24 was the same. So Benny Johnson was 239 at the time. Uh, on or about February 14, 2024, Halina uh, Shudra shared the U.S. Company One, a video well known U.S. political commentator visiting a grocery store in Russia. That must have been Tucker Carlson, I remember that. Uh, they posted Founder 2 on Discord. They want me to post this, referencing the video that they had posted, but it just feels like overt chilling. Founder 2 replied that Founder 1 thinks we should put it out there. Producer 1 acquiesced, responding, all right, I'll put it out tomorrow. If that's the, like, Tucker Carlson in Russia shopping thing, that's so funny that even they thought it was too cringe. It's where he's, like, walking around and being like, you won't believe the technology they have in the supermarkets here. You put a little coin into this, the shopping cart, and it releases. And then you get to shop with it, and then you put it back to get your coin back. And I don't know if that was a big thing for, like, Americans, because, like, as long as I've been alive, that's just been how, like, shopping carts work in Canada. So you go to the store, you bring a loony, and you put the loony inside, and then you get the shopping cart, you shop. They, they usually have, like, magnetic wheels that shut down and all that kind of stuff if you try to leave the area and, you know, to try and prevent people from stealing shopping carts. But it was, like, a huge thing, and Tucker Carlson was making such a big deal out of it, and then everyone was just, like, laughing at him. And then you can tell the tenant, even if it is tenant, by the way, allegedly, uh, didn't want to post that. Truth about fluoride, original audio. Of course, this is not a direct comparison, but is anyone happy with the soaring grocery prices in America? Featuring Tucker Carlson. Interesting. Some more legwork in this thread, identifying the other unnamed and very lightly masked commentators in, in the indictment. Commentator uh, number six is for sure Matt Christensen. This is the video referencing in the paragraph. Uh, on or about November 1st, one of the six commentators listed on the U.S. Company Number 1 website. Commentator 6 posted a video on YouTube announcing the launch of U.S. Company 1. In the video, Commentator 6 explained that U.S. Company 1 was a project of Founder 1 and Founder 2 who were trying to build a new platform for independent media with the initial lineup of six content creators, namely Commentator 1 through Commentator 6. 
And then find me on Senate Media, Monday, November 6th. Can't... Again, this is all circumstantial, but it is certainly like, you know, once you start connecting a lot of the dots, it does make the most sense uh, to try and put this all together. It's also like, it's so wild to me because like, it, it, this doesn't happen in lefty media. Like, you know, I hang out with the leftist mafia all the time. We joke about how behind the scenes, the offers we get, like I, I get, uh, you know, uh, Raid Shadow Legends and G Fuel emails and stuff like that. Um, but I've never had, like, uh, Hi Lance, we appreciate your independent uh, left-wing media organization. Uh, we represent the government of China. We would like to now uh, offer you $200,000. Uh, we ask only that you promote uh, positive stories about, uh, you know, the Chinese Communist Party. I'm like, I, I, I just don't get those. <laughs> you know, I, we, I, I wouldn't have that option available to me. I'll have, like, you know, Means TV be like, hey, do you want to join the, the worker cooperative? Uh, you know stuff like that and I'm like yeah sure but I, I don't get like hundreds of thousands of dollars just like thrown at you to be like hey can you do RT stories but try and make them look like not RT stories intentionally for US media consumption that way it doesn't look like it's always coming from RT and that way we kind of hide the whole RT of it all so yeah that's pretty wild so I wonder how bad this can get that's the part of it I don't know and this was from uh, the New York Times visual investigation team, by the way. This is not just like, you know, random accounts. My statement regarding allegations and the leaked DOJ indictment. Should these allegations prove true? I, as well as the other personalities and commentators, were deceived and are victims. I cannot speak for anyone else at the company as to what they do or do not, what they are instructed. The Culture War podcast was licensed by Tenet Media. It existed well before any license agreement with Tenet and will continue to exist after any such agreement expires. The only change with the agreement was that the location of the live broadcast moved to Tenet's YouTube channel. Never at any point did anyone other than I have full editorial control over the show, and the contents of the show are often apolitical. Examples include discussing spirituality, dating, and video games. I love that. I, I love that these are the apolitical political talk like we've watched the tenant media videos on this the dating ones are like would you ever date a trans woman and then like you know interviewing people in the street in vegas while they're all drunk and stuff like that like i you can't always claim that something's like apolitical content even though you're making it very very political by saying it's about the culture wars i don't know this, this is just about you know wokeness and video games dei bridge that kind of stuff you know the uh, sweet baby ink we're, we're not trying to actually like talk about politics and stuff and i was like you're talking about civil rights. You're talking about representation of marginalized groups in media and how it pisses you off because you're white supremacists. That's that's political. Even if you're talking about video games and movies. The show is produced in its entirety by our local team without input from anyone else external to the company. T uh, TCW is a separate company not associated with TimCast.com or other properties. This isn't denying anything that's in those indictments, though. But this is certainly confirming that I guess it is tenant. Um, or other properties, it exists solely for the production of the Culture War podcast. That being said, we still do not know what is true, as these are only allegations. Putin is a scumbag. Russia sucks donkey balls. Oh, yeah. Well, the, now you know. I mean, he's certainly, certainly separated himself. Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Ukraine is our enemy, being funded by the Democrats. I will stress this again. One of the greatest enemies of our nation right now is Ukraine. They are expanding this war. Now, don't get me wrong. I know you've got criminal elements of the U.S. government pushing them and guiding them and telling them what to do. Ukraine is now accused a German warrant issued for blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline. In uh, 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 triggering this conflict. Ukraine is the greatest threat to this nation and to the world. Canada's convoy influencer and counter signal contributor, Cat Canada, was on chatting with Lauren Southern a month ago comparing Canada to her childhood in the USSR. Interesting. What do you think when you watch these videos of cues for jobs? You know, we've got the mass immigration issue, Indians just all lining up outside Tim Hortons. So the first thing that crosses my mind, Lauren, is it's terrifying because it's all too reminiscent. By the way, I loved like two seconds into listening to Lauren Southern talk. You can just be like, I can't believe you tried to rebrand yourself as a centrist. Like, just embrace the Nazism, all right? You're a fucking white supremacist, always will be. Too reminiscent of the life I lived under communist USSR um, when I was a child. I recall these lines. I recall standing in these lines with my mom in the bread lines, in the food lines, whatever lines there was. And it's truly terrifying to see that happening in Canada. It's just like a, a nightmare flashback across my eyes. What do you think when you... Interesting stuff. So, there's, there's you know, for obvious reasons, I can only say so much, but uh, I can just stress the point. Culture War is going to be live this Friday morning at 10 a.m. 
and uh, we're gonna be discussing, I think, movies. So I don't, I don't know. You know, I I love the uh, what 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 is this? Look on the right. Scandal. DOJ claims Benny Johnson and Lauren Chen are Russian agents with Natalie Winters. Uh, oh, they claim that. Did well, they? scandal is a question mark. Yeah, that's oh. that. That's actually not true. They don't. They, they claim Benny Johnson was a victim. But, uh, you know, it's all over X or whatever, and everyone's talking about it. And uh, I just think it's funny that they're like, it pushed Russian interests. And I'm just like, uh, our show will be live on Friday, and we're talking about movies, I think. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, movie production this time. So, whatever. Man, it's like, it is, it's a very sensitive period of human history. We're talking a little bit about the show, like the world order, the shifting of the world order. They want to, like, evolve the liberal economic order into a new world order that's more viable, I don't know, that, that's more synergistic with the way we live, that's not BRICS because the BRICS alliance looks like a counter-imposing order. And like, how is that happening? And, and are people getting caught up in, the, uh, in the, psych, the psychological warfare? Obviously, if people are coming in with fake money and, and defrauding companies and, and YouTube creators. I think it's kind of more interesting, and I'm not suggesting anything nefarious from the DOJ, but... You know, today is the first time Tim Walls is doing his solo appearances, two of them in Pennsylvania. G Kamala Harris is up in New Hampshire talking about how she's going to help small businesses. And then we're like, hey, it's kind of a slow news day except for this thing. Like, why is the press during the election cycle taking this off day, not covering what these two Democrats are talking about? Instead, the DOJ has released. It's not just this. The DOJ has a ton of uh, yeah, of things really. that have come out today. And it's interesting to me that, you know, maybe it's coincidental, but also that the news media seems to have taken a pause waited for these to come out and then this tap happens to be the one that's getting big on x probably i think the funny thing is x. that like dave rubin was posting clips of just like a guy buying stuff at taco bell and getting mad but if if it turned if i found out that someone was secretly funneling money through adsense to my channel i'd be like cut it all off i don't care well, i'll go I, sleep I, in I a might ditch have some news for you <laughs> oh yeah um yeah i mean we've looked at like we kind of addressed this with you the last board meeting we had about certain sites like syphilisdating.com and <laughs> do it don't, don't, go to it, don't, don't go to don't it don't go to it sounds, sounds wonderful sites <laughs> that we talk about well it, it does because it lists what the your heck? brother and you as the owner and there's a series of 55 year olds like antifahub.org oh interesting a lot of them are packed with malware a lot of them are packed with they have security reports yeah but that but, but what does that have to do with me i don't or YouTube? know I'm, I'm saying yeah. i don't know but you should look into it Hey, if you'd like to unlock secret bonus episodes as well as uncensored content, go to patreon.com slash the serves. This show is produced by Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine, Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Political Puppy, Preston Kroll, Quiet185, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Cernicus, Stellar Gwynn, Sebastian Demmel, Travis McClinton, Trincell, Words Greenwood, with additional support coming from all of these amazing human beings right here.